I still find myself interested in what he has to say. Because he's still a Jet. You know, he's still still here. Oh, we have breaking news? I think we need to hold off on Aaron Rodgers. Okay, hold off on Aaron Rodgers. We'll get to it later. What um, happened? We have an emerging New York football story. Which is... Double what, break. What do you say to players in this town that challenge fans? <laughs> I say you made a big, big mistake and you will lose every battle with the fans. Okay, so this from Daryl Slater, NJ Advance Media. Mm. Evan Neal has had a whole lot to say today. Oh, that's uh, not good. Ugh. Among his comments regarding his critics, why would a lion concern himself with the opinion of a sheep? <laughs> Quote, the person that's commenting on my performance, what do they do? Flip hot dogs and hamburgers somewhere? <sighs> mm. And then he dares his critics, boo louder, and blast blast the Fairweather fans mm. of the Giants. <sighs> Tiki, mm. can you call this guy up? No, I mean. Can you give some advice to poor Evan Neal? You're just, you're just not winning. It doesn't matter how right you think you are. By the way, I hate that quote. I hate it. You just used it, though. I know, but I hate it. <laughs> Not, not, not mine. I'm talking about the. Why would the lion oh. bother? I, oh, I apologize. I, I hate that. I hate it. Yeah, it's so ridiculous. Because <laughs> you're not a lion. No, you're a bust. <laughs> That's the what people you are. you're talking about. Aren't sheep? We're not sheep, and you're not a lion. You're a bust. We're customers and fans. Mm. The, the only saving grace for him is that when is he going to be highlighted to get booed? Yeah, it's different than a baseball player who shows up yeah. and is announced to the lineup. Or, or it's a, different. Or a wide receiver, or a running back, or quarterback. quarterback. Yeah, whoever, a guy who's going to make a play that is going to be highlighted at the at the stadium. Wow, that's that's unnecessary. It's stupid. It's unnecessary. If I may, as the fan in this scenario, go ahead. F this guy, okay? <laughs> because not for nothing, Evan Neal, somebody, and maybe this is why Justin Pugh is needed, needs to put their arm around you before you say something stupid, which he already has. Yeah. The bottom line is this. We as fans, Giants fans I'm talking about, have suffered, and I know nobody wants to hear our song and dance, plenty of us have seen Super Bowls, but have suffered through arguably the worst offensive line play for the better part of a decade. The Giants used a top 10 pick on you from Alabama. Chose you, by the way, uh, over Charles Cross, who's done a good job in Seattle. Mm -hmm. And we were very patient through one year of his struggles because we saw Andrew Thomas struggle. But we, as Giant fans, have seen first-round picks like Eric Flowers bust out. We are trying our best to give patience to anybody drafted by Joe Shane. Mm -hmm. Even some fans and media alike have suggested, well, maybe Evan Neal's not a bust. You slot him inside the guard. To not have the wherewithal and understanding that, frankly, your play through two years of your career now sucks and is unacceptable, and that we can't see that because we might be flipping hot dogs or hamburgers, but we don't have two freaking eyes, spare me. Evan Neal, your play has been trash. I don't care if any of us haven't stepped foot on a football field, and we can't afford for you to be trash. So zip your mouth and learn how to block. It's probably, and we've seen this before, like the battle with the New York fan, it's probably one of the dumbest tone-deaf quotes I think I've ever heard from a New York athlete. Mm -hmm. Because this isn't, and I can name other guys. By the way, it's not the fan that's saying these things. It's the analyst that's saying these things. Well, it's also saying, the fan, but it's also the fan. I understand that, but he's lumping everybody who evaluates him into uh, this ignorant w characterization right. of people who are criticizing him. <laughs> it's just not. It's just not. He's not factually correct, mm. right? Guys who did what you did and played the game that you played see that you're struggling right now, right? And you're a first round pick, and you're just held to a higher standard. It just is what it is. Sure, right? You can't escape that. If you were a sixth round pick. You might get more excuses for or more leeway for being bad you, earlier in your career. You will, career. actually. Absolutely, you yeah. will. It's the bust factor. It's you're a first-round pick. They used a premium pick on you. It, like, a lot of guys who have gone back at us are accomplished players in this town or guys that have accomplished something elsewhere. Yeah, they have a resume that they can they can back that backs them up. 100%. Like, Giancarlo Stanton, when he was booed by Yankee fans and never went back at them— had accomplishments. Julius Randle gave Nick fans the middle finger, but at least Julius in his mind could say, hey, I was great for you in uh, the past. Yeah, I was all NBA the year before. <laughs> like, almost as if I gave you this, how come you don't appreciate mm -hmm. this? This guy has played 17 games now in the NFL. 
I think it's 13 games last year, the four games this year, and he's been bad. Like, he's been consistently bad. And Giant fans are frustrated by that. And media members or former players or writers are just calling it like they see it with him. It's nothing personal, just like it wasn't personal with Zach Wilson. You're reacting to the way the guy played. And for Evan Neal to take that kind of attack on the fans of this town and the people that pay money, Mm. big money, to see the New York Giants play on prime time and then basically have to leave early fourth quarter because you can't protect the quarterback, Mm. honestly, it's as bad as it gets. Yeah. Yeah. You're never winning that fight. Even if you're right, you're never winning the fight. And he's not right, so he's definitely not winning that fight. And by the way, what's wrong with flipping hot dogs and hamburgers? Well, that's the other thing. I mean, it's a jerk thing to say, and I'm not even trying to make a joke. A lot of good people, but I busted my ass at Subway for 10 years. All right, now say what you want to say about me. I watch football. It doesn't mean I know the perfect X's and O's and seam blocks by Tiki, but I know when a guy is good and a not good or when he's struggling or not. To take a shot at people trying to bust their ass working in the food industry like they're nobodies that you can step on, honestly, get lost, Evan Neal. You're a loser, man. This is the face turn Sean Morash needed, Louis. Because it's, yeah. it's a loser attitude, man. Yeah. It's a total loser attitude. Standing up for the little guy. I'm just gonna... wrapping my head around him working at Subway for 10 years. What a run oh, that is. Yeah. A is your run. face like hung oh. up on the wall there? 16 like a plant? 26, man. How did you not get fired for eating the product? I, it's how I got fat. There was I went Stop. To, this is not true. <laughs> tiki. I was not smart. Now, I'm, as I'm trying to make a case on why I was, I went through a period of time where I ate three oatmeal raisin cookies every day for breakfast for two years because I thought they were healthy because they're oatmeal and raisin. <laughs> little, little inside baseball here real quick. When Sean used to work at Subway when we were part-timers here, he would make me sandwiches and bring me at work. Oh, that's like tremendous. Nice friend. You're a good man. I'm yeah. just, look, my good dad man. sliced deli meat his whole life. He ba- essentially flipped out. No, I do, do. You're right. It's, it's, it's BS, man. It's a, it's a douche comment. It's, it's really what it is. It's a really... Douchey comment okay, to make how, about us and New Yorkers. How soon till he apologizes? He's got. He's got to. I'm serious. How, he, how soon till he apologizes? Uh, well, okay. Walk me are through you, this. Are you giving it an hour? No, no. Walk. I guarantee you, Pat Hanlon is going straight to him right now. Well, that's saying, my question, Evan. What? Not you, Evan. <laughs> Evan. What? You you got to walk that back. You have to. So they're probably talking to him right now. Hmm. Right now. This story just came out. Who you said? Daryl Slater had it. Daryl Slater. Yeah. So Daryl Slater had a one-on-one with Evan Neal. Probably asked him, hey, you know, what's it like getting booed? Uh, fair question. Mm-hmm. And Evan Neal's response is to call all of us. Sh- Read the quote again. I apologize. I want to hear this again. He called okay. a sheep. Well, yes. He Well, first of all, he dared his critics to boo louder. Boo blasted, louder. Blasted Fairweather fans. And hold on. Let me get the other quote. Why would a lion concern himself with the opinion of sheep? The person that's commenting on my performance, what does he do? Flip hot dogs and hamburgers somewhere? <laughs> He's a loser, man. By the way, you know, you know why that, that, that idiom is so dumb? Because a sheep doesn't have an opinion of a lion. A sheep is scared blankless of a lion. And they don't interact ever because they're not in the same geographic area. This areas. is what bothers you. But, <laughs> yes. <laughs> what if there's the what if It just <laughs> doesn't make sense. How about 10 sheep versus one lion? Could they take them down? No. <laughs> no. No. I can't believe that's what bothers you. It's, it's just stupid. Oh, it's certain stupid. Things, certain things are like, I, I don't know. I don't like. I can't even put the words to it. No, it's like dumb. They would, make, they would make sense, right? Right, because it would it, it likely would interact. But it, a sheep is never going to have an opinion of a lion ever. We are so ever. Di- we are so different. <laughs> this is what bothers you. What bothers me. What bothered Sean was someone flipping burgers. Mm-hmm. What bothers me is I'm thinking about every other Giant fan who has a job that Evan Neal says disqualifies you from talking about the Giants. So the police officers that mm-hmm. protect you, they're not qualified. The firemen and the firewomen that protect you, the doctors, the nurses, the teachers, the accountants, mm-hmm. the, the anybody, it doesn't even freaking matter. I am they're lo- all a bunch of idiots who their opinions don't matter because they didn't play tackle at college football and then suck in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Like literally anyone else, you can't have an opinion. Can I change this officially forever? Can I change this idiom officially forever? What do you want to change it to? Why would a lion concern himself with the opinion of the hyena? The hyena. The hyena. The hyena. You know why? Because the hyena will scavenge a, a whatever, a, a killed gazelle. And then the lion comes up, <laughs> and the hyena will be like, hey, lion, this is my kill. This is mine. And the lion will say, I don't care about your opinion. I'm going to eat you if you don't leave. So the lion <laughs> this is does like the... not concern himself with the opinion of the hyena, not the sheep, 
the hyena. Isn't this the plot to Lion King? <laughs> <laughs> I killed Mufasa. <laughs> say, say it again. Mufasa. We are, we are all so different. What we take out of this. <laughs> He's obsessed with the hyenas and the lions no, and the, the whatever. Just, the sheep. The sheep and the lion aren't in the same I, environment. They don't live in the Serengeti. <laughs> right, so, t- so, so take me through this. This quote came out, what, in the last 20 minutes, basically? Yeah, about yes. 20 It's minutes old, now. though. People have been saying this forever. No, I don't mean that part. I mean, <laughs> Evan Neal's comments to yes, Daryl yes, Slater. Yes, yes, yes. How quickly are the Giants PR getting to Evan Neal and saying, what's wrong with you? Fix this. I promise you, Hanlon or someone has already reached out to him. Okay, so they've reached out to him. Already. Make believe you. I'm Evan Neal. You're Pat Hanlon. Yes. Hey, what's up? Hey, uh, Evan. Yeah. This is easy because my name is Evan. <laughs> exactly. Go ahead. Yeah, what's uh, up, man? We need to get, you know, fix this on the record. This is not going to go over well with yeah, our fan base. But I'm sorry. That's the way I feel. They're a it's, bunch of idiots. But it's drawing unnecessary attention. Well, they're morons. Too bad. <laughs> no way he's saying that. You don't think he's saying that? There's no chance. They he's flip burgers. That. Who cares? You yeah. know, he's not thinking that. They're saying that. It, this is just, this is really, honestly, also Tiki. What the hell is going on with the locker room now, too? Mm. Why does Evan Neal feel like he can say something like this? And that's my worry because, because you know he's what? frustrated. But right? you know he's, what? A lot of guys were frustrated in 2017 probably, and McAdoo lost the But home. he's probably mad at himself. And so the war, the hardest thing for any person to to accept is when you know you're doing something wrong and you get called out for it. It's just it's just hard to accept. You you just you just want to fight. Like you're on the defensive. So your your instinct I think it's just a human instinct. Mm. When you get attacked for any reason, even even if it's justifiable, is to fight back, right? It's to put up a facade, put up a shield, find a way to to regain the power. Because when you start getting insulted, and this is this is this is core behind bullying, by the way. When 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 you're demeaning someone, you're trying to take power away from them. And so Evan Neal is trying to fight back because he's starting to feel powerless. Because of all this hate that's getting thrown on him because of how bad he's playing. And so he's fighting back by attacking. When what he should do is say, you know what? You're right. I'm I played like crap. And, <laughs> well, yeah. I'm, and I'm gonna get better. That that's the only answer. And one thing I'm sure Evan Neal faces, and it's completely wrong, by the way, mm-hmm. and I'm sure a lot of athletes face, is more than just the criticism of you're bad and you're a bust. I'm sure on social media. He gets horrible things written to him. And by the way, that's wrong. Get off of social media. You should get off social media, but that crap's kind of wrong. And even some of the things that fans say to him, it's wrong. But 98% of the criticism, and tell me if I'm wrong about this, because you've heard what fans have said when you've been on the field. Social media, not as much, but certainly in your post-retirement life or your post-career life. Mm -hmm. Post. Well, most fans. Football life. Yeah, Yeah. not retirement life. Unless you're retiring (laughs) now. That'd be something. What a swerve that would be. Um (laughs) Most of the criticism is just, hey, you're struggling. You need to be better. Yeah. Like the criticism of guys like Sean is simply, dude, you got to be better. First round pick, right tackle, Alabama, let's go. So don't let the minority of people, and they exist. I don't want to act mm-hmm. like they don't, who say the awful things to you. Yeah. Don't let that make you think that's the majority but, of Giant fans because yeah. it isn't. But the problem is it's a, it's a, min- it's a vocal minority. The vocal minority is always louder than the passive minority. It's it's just it's always the case. But in the social media world, and I'm assuming this is where he's feeling all of this, it you just can't help but see it. Like guys are they they just can't turn off their mentions. Right. They just can't leave their phone away. They can't just be involved in life as opposed to being involved in what the opinion of everybody around them. <laughs> and so he so he throws out this dumb quote, which by the way should be the lion should not concern himself <laughs> with the opinion of the hyena. <laughs> Not the sheep. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm changing this forever. We got gotcha. you. Just changing it. He he's hearing all of these opinions about him, and his instinct is to get defensive. And so, when you get defensive, there's a couple of ways to do it. One, a, a smart one, is not to insult the New York sports fan. Yeah, trust me, you, you will not win. You lose every single time, and it's tough to come back from. Now, some guys have. Yeah, Francisco Lindor has. Julius Randle sort of has. Yeah. I yeah. think he kind of has. But it's tough to get back from. And you better play real well to get them back. Now, there's more that he said. Yeah. Would you, would it upset you if someone that's a fan of you is booing you as you're typing out your articles and you're doing your work? Would it piss you off? You're a human, ain't you? Okay. Okay. 
maybe it should piss you off. But then fuel yourself to be better. Fuel yourself to write better articles. To play a sport, nobody's telling you you have to do this for a living, comes the criticisms. You're getting paid a lot of money. We pay a lot of money to go to these games. I'm sorry. Like, that comes with the territory. That's not an excuse to be sensitive. We've already lost this guy, man. Mm. I, I, I'm sorry. You know what the difference is with Lindor and Randall? They're good. No, I agree. Yeah. It's a big difference. He by the, stinks. By the way, getting booed is part of – it's just of part course. of sports. Like, you're playing a game. Like, it's a kid's game. Making a king's ransom to steal Warren Sapp's line. It's it's a game. It's not <laughs> life. You don't suck at life. You yeah. suck at football. Catch yeah. right the now. freaking ball, Tiki. And by the way, I went through this, right? I'm, I'll never forget this. Thomas George, writer from, I think he was writing for the New York Times at the time. He came to me in training camp. I always would sit in the training in the uh, in the lunchroom. I didn't. I never went back and napped. I'd just hang out with the writers and stuff. And he came over and sat down at my table one day. And he was like, "Hey, Tiki, you got a fumbling prop." I'm like, "What are you talking about? Like, get out of here!" And he just gave me all the stats and he wrote this article. And all of a sudden, I had a fumbling problem. So every time I fumbled, I'd get booed. Right. right? And it would be easy to lash out it, it, because I'm still really good. But, yeah, I have a fumbling issue. I I chose consciously to, to just accept it. You say, you know what? You're right. I got to fix it. I got to fix it. And eventually, I did. Yeah. So I took back control over it. The only way Evan Neal is going to fix this is, is, is if he gets better. If he starts playing better, he starts playing with a different urgency. One of these sacks that Daniel Jones, this, the interception that Daniel Jones threw, right? It, they ran a game, and Evan Neal is like chasing, chasing the D tackle that's going back to get ready to put pressure on on Daniel Jones, so he's got to let it go too early. And he's like, he's like walking over to him. It's like there's no urgency, right? Right, and it's. So it's it's one thing to not be bad. It's another thing to look like you're not trying. Well, yeah, he's at And two, that's the problem with him. He's right had now. two things go really bad for him. Number one, the giant offensive line stinks, and he's the face of it. Yes. Because Andrew Thomas is out, who we all know how great he is, and you're the first-round pick. You're the guy from Alabama. Mm-hmm. You're the guy that's supposed to have helped fix this problem, and you haven't. So number one, the offensive line failures – I think a lot of the anger points now towards Evan Neal. The second thing that hurts him is that on a weekly basis, we see clips on social media yep. of Evan Neal doing things that maybe you could explain away, mm-hmm. but look bad. Yeah. Look really, really yeah. bad. So the giant fans' angst at the line has become all about Evan Neal. Now, what's interesting about these quotes is he isn't mentioning social media. He's mentioning specifically the booing and the booing that the Giants heard the other night. Evan, they all got booed. Yeah. They all got booed. You lost 24 right. to 3. The and head coach media. got booed. And you know what makes him more of a coward, too? These comments two before two straight road games. Punk ass. Mm. Oh, jeez. He lost Sean, bro. Uh, he is. You know what? I'm done with him. On, you want to talk about just selling pieces at the deadline? Trade Evan Neal now. No, who the hell would want him? I don't care. Take an undrafted free agent for him. He's I'm my fat ass! Right. I don't well, even want to salvage him. Well, what I've heard about Giant fans is once you lose more ass, you've lost them all. That's what I've heard. Are we 100% sure there's no sheep in the Serengeti, though? Is that <laughs> the for sure? No, I don't there know. There could I'm be just, some stray I sheep of, in I the think Serengeti. I think of sheep in, like, a mountain in, I don't know. I understand that. In Finland or but something. But there could be or some, like, rogue Sweden. sheep in the Serengeti that stumbled across the Serengeti, you, hence uh, this quote. So, all right, tell me, do you think Why about Why did think you of, go back into this? Because I'm fascinated by this. Think about what a lion eats. Yes. Uh, like they're they're eating wildebeest or wildebeest. or hyenas. Or hyena. No, they don't really eat hyenas. The meat's, too, the meat's too tough. They don't eat people. Well, they, they could. They're in the way they will. Yeah. Um but they eat like gazelles, giraffes, and giraffes, hippos, and zebras, yeah, things like that. When have you ever seen a lion and a sheep? I'm not saying that there are a lot of sheep in the Serengeti. I'm just not ruling out that but there also, are sheep. But there. also a sheep. Think about what sheepish sheepish. Sheep don't have opinions. They're, like, terrified. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the point, though. That's why lions don't concern themselves with yeah, the but, sheep. Okay, but so if someone is booing the lion. it's a metaphor. If he's the lion. Yeah, so it's a, the metaphor doesn't make sense. That's the problem. If you're going to do a metaphor, it has to make sense. Please put a poll out, Evan. Right? No, so the if, giant season's crumbling, and you guys are acting like we're the long out of game four. Who gives a rat's ass? If you're a well, lion. We're one and you're breaking down the serendipity. <laughs> The rooster. I can't take you two anymore. No, we're not going we're to suck. the. We're not going to the ice cream shop on the Upper West Side. Serendipity. <laughs> the rooster has sex with all. Of them. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that was fun. Cool levity. 